Everybody in the world, it appears, wants to deliver the internet to us wirelessly. The same experience we have on our desktop, they want us to have on our phones. I don't think that's the right answer. There are some people who are doing some interesting things. If you look at Google search and you look at Yahoo Go search, you will see two distinct differences. And I'm going to use the example they use just because it proves a point. If you go to Google and you type in Paris, you're going to get all kinds of links and all kinds of things, and you're going to have to sort out where you want. If you go to Yahoo Go and you type in Paris and you're in the general search, you're going to get links to Paris, France by you know, travel, by hotels, by tours, by that kind of thing, and then it'll submenu. If you're in the entertainment section of their search engine and you type in Paris, you're going to get everything you didn't want to know about Paris Hilton because they built some smarts into their search engine. And that's the kind of thing that I think we need to do. And, and I'm going to talk more about that. The, the issue here is that we have smart networks, smartphones, and we don't need to take the dumb internet and move it to wireless where we have been with constraints. There is a big difference. I read the article in the Wall Street Journal and Walter Mossberg missed something. Wireless networks are managed bandwidth. The internet is unmanaged. It just sits there and it regulates itself, it manages itself. The wireless networks, there is a networks operation center 24 by 7 with people sitting behind desks doing load balancing, making sure that all the cell sites are up and working, and making sure that nobody is hogging bandwidth and that everything works. When Google runs out of capacity, they add more fiber and a bunch of servers. When Verizon runs out of capacity in a given area, they have to add a new cell site, two and a half, three years in the making. Now, constrained bandwidth, I won't name the network, but there have been tests run. Company streaming live TV over a 3G network, six people in a common cell sector, and that network came down in that cell sector. That was six people watching TV, and that was exceeded the capacity of data capability on that cell sector. We don't have that kind of problem on the internet yet. We're going to get it, but we don't have it. But we do have it on mobile, and we're going to continue to have it, and the internet community doesn't understand that we have shared bandwidth wirelessly. And you know what? Some of the wireless operators seem to think the same thing. Today's email, PIM games, and entertainment offerings are their own user interface, but access to all other information is via a browser on a wireless device. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Is that what we want? The internet is not a destination. It's a route to information. And the browser should not be the only window into that information. Jim Hobbs talked about active content. This is a little more in depth. We have smart devices, which are getting smarter, smart networks, and we need smarter applications that can be embedded in other applications to make the internet wireless. Let's take a look at an example. Today, I have my Outlook calendar and my phone. So my Outlook calendar appears in my phone. Thursday, I'm on an airplane, and it's in my calendar. If I want to check on that flight, I get out of my calendar into my browser. I go to aa.com. I type in the date and the time of the flight, which is already in my calendar. I get information that's static in nature, and I bring it back to my calendar. What if my calendar did all that for me? What if it went out and it checked on the flight? What if it knew what city I was going to, so it brought me a weather icon? What if it knew and monitored the traffic on my route to the airport and moved up my leave time if I had to? What if it downloaded turn-by-turn -turn directions for me 
for the hotel I'm going to stay in from the Hertz Rental Car Agency. Why can't that be done? Why do we have to use a browser? Why do we have to use existing websites to do that? So here's some examples. Some of these are true. There are uh, banking systems today, and you get a notice on your phone. Hey, somebody just charged $2,500 to your credit card. Do you want to approve it? So either you did it, or a family member did it, or you don't know anything about it. But you have the ability to instantly respond to that. You use your phone for navigation, turn-by-turn -turn directions. During your travels, you receive instant real-time traffic reports on your route, suggestions for rerouting. That's happening, and it's going to continue to happen, and it's real-time. Your calendar shows an appointment out of office. Driving directions are automatically downloaded and available. You and your buddies pick a place to meet, and you can watch on a map to see where everyone is as they converge on a meeting place. This kind of thing is happening already, but it's going to get better. You receive an alert of your favorite team has scored a goal, and with one click, you can watch a two-minute video clip. Your plane is delayed, and automatic emails are sent to your admin, your rental car company, and your client. This is all simple stuff. It's all easy to do, and it's all better than having the wireless, the internet wirelessly, as far as I'm concerned. It's better than browsers. Browsers belong on a phone to me as a last resort, not as the first resort. 